welcome to our 2022 R Pod 192. We're gonna start right in the back bumper here. If you just kind of reach in, squeeze that guy together, you can pull it on out. And inside of the back bumper, you're gonna find your sewer hose. So as you pull that on out, take note of those two ears there on your adapter. That's how I'll be hooking it up to your sewer system. And then the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keeping it stored in the back bumper here just to help keep any sort of stench out of the unit, keep things a bit fresher for you. Then you're just gonna squeeze that guy back in place and punch it back in. In this corner, as well as in each corner of the trailer, you're gonna find these stabilizer jacks here. So what they're gonna do is they're just gonna run down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so just to firm it up and they'll just get rid of any sort of bounce or sway that you see you got in the unit right now. Just keep things firm while you're out camping. Right up by them, you're gonna find the low point drains there. So basically just gonna open up that valve, allows the water system to drain itself out. The purpose of that would be if you're leaving the trailer for a while, you don't want your water going stale or stagnant, you can just drain it all out first. Otherwise, it would be for winterization, you just want to get all the water out before pumping it to freeze through. Another step forward, we got your sewer system here, so that cap's just going to kind of press in, give it a little turn, and it'll pop out of there. Then you see it's got the same two gears that your sewer hose had, so that'll attach the same way. Just going to press it in, give it a turn, clicks into place. On the left you got a grey valve, on the right you got a black, so that black valve is controlling your black tank. The black tank is going to be filled from your toilets, that's of course going to be our dirtiest water, so we'll be dumping that first. Once that's done you'll then come to the grey, the grey tank is going to be filled from your sinks as well as your shower, typically cleaner water, we'll dump that last to help keep that hose as clean as possible. Straight up from there we've got a satellite inlet, so you're just going to plug a coax cable under there and it'll fire up at your TV location. Beside that we've got your power inlet, so as you pop that open you're going to find a little notch in the bottom corner there. It's going to line up with this notch here. Just press those in, give it a little eighth turn, that'll lock it into place, then you get the threaded collar in the back there to really lock it down. Following that cord back you're going to find a standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites are going to have that, you can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter, so if you're looking to plug in at home to charge your batteries or run your fridge, you've got the power to do so. Up from your power inlet is just the exhaust for your furnace there, so you just want, if you're ever running a furnace, you just want to make sure it's not blocked off, it does get hot. Beside that is just a service port for your fridge, nothing back there for you to worry about. Up here we've just got kind of your vent for your stove, so of course propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you're using it, so you just want to make sure this flap out here is opened up and our fan inside turned on so that we're evacuating our fumes. Once you're done, you're going to press it back into place, you can hear that click and just prevent any dust from kicking up in there while you're out traveling. Towards the front of the unit, you got your fresh water connection here, so you're just gonna pop that cap out of there. You can take your water hose, plug it into there, turn on the water, and that'll fill, the, fill up your fresh water tank. Below that is your city water connection, so the same water hose will plug into there, turn on the water, and that'll pressurize the lines throughout the unit. For your fresh water tank drain, you can just see I got the last bit of it dripping out down there. It's basically just this cap, threads onto it, and plugs it off. simple as that. One into your storage compartment here, so as you, hold, as you open that on up, you just get the magnetic latch to hold it open. This customer here has opted to go with these surge guards, so we've just got that stored in here for him. We've also got in here a water hose for him, as well as that park adapter I was telling you about. It's your 30 amp cord into there, 15 to a standard outlet. Around front of the unit. A little red box up on the frame there is your battery disconnect switch, so you can see with that over to the right, that's it turned on. Flip it up pointing up and that'll be it turned off. Your battery itself is housed inside of this box here so as long as you're plugged in through that short cord in the back or your seven pin to your tow vehicle that battery is charging for you. This one little knob there if you loosen that off you can push it back and you get access to your propane tank in here so just a standard barbecue style tank you're just going to turn that knob to open it up. Up in front we've got your uh, power tongue jack here so the light switch up top turns on the little light in the bottom and then for the switch up is up and down is down. Other end of your storage compartment here, so in here we're going to find basically the entirety of your kind of exterior kitchen setup as well as kind of your manual jacks here. So this one big one there is going to be for running all the stabilizers, just put some to the end, just standard three quarter inch. And then this one right here is the manual override for the tongue jack up front. Then we've also just got, like I said, your kitchen setup out here, so we've got this one little table. So just taking over to this channel here, you got that lip is going to go up to the top, and that'll just sit on this channel here. So, just lining up the top, letting it fall into place, and then underneath the little table is kind of a little kick out here. Just helps hold it up right. So now we'll grab your griddle, and just pull that up and out of the way for now. And underneath it is the mount. Alright, 
So you got the same sort of channel on this guy here. You just kind of swing the wings out for it and they pop into place. Line up the top, let it fall down. Grab your griddle and then you can see it's got two little wings on it here. So those will line up and just slide into place. Once you have it slid in place, you just get these little clips there so you can just line those up. Just locks it down. Then for your quick connect here, you're going to pull that black collar back and you can undo it. Then in the back of the unit right by the regulator, you're just going to attach it to there. And then just towards the back here, you'll find your quick propane quick connect down here. So you're just going to undo that get, the little plug. Same sort of quick connect down here, you're going to push the collar back and then attach the hose. Just down here, you've got the addition of that valve. So if that valve opened up, you cannot undo that quick connect. So it's just kind of an added safety. So if you've got the flow of propane turned on, you cannot undo it. Right. So with that all done up, we can come to the griddle now. Press that knob in. Turn it past light and you hear that little click. And you're just going repetitively, to repetitively do that until you see the flame in there. And that's that. Once we're done, we're going to turn it back off turn off the flow of propane, undo that quick connect, put our dust cap back in there. And then I do just like to connect the hose to itself, just ensures that absolutely nothing's gonna be getting in there. And then you're just sliding it back off and storing it back away, but I'll do that kind of off camera just to save us some time here. So your two exterior speakers right behind your doors, and then behind your kitchen here you did have also a GFI protected outlet so if you're looking to have coffee or toast or something out here you got the power to do so also black here you've got a black tank flush so you may notice over time after having gone and dumped your black tank your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds whatever it may be typically it's just some debris inside of your tank hanging between the probes causing that misread so what you're going to do is just take your water hose and plug it into there open up your black valve turn on the water and that'll just flush out that tank getting rid of any sort of debris that could be causing that issue this right here is a little spray port, so we'll go and grab. Oh, it just clicks back in place. So your hose here, we get those two little ears on the adapter there. So we'll just be pressing those into place. You give it a little eighth turn that locks it in, and then you got cold water through it. It is just cold water, it does not hook into the hot water system. Once you're done, you're just gonna wanna extend it out, make sure that any water that is in there just kicks out out. And then just start it back away. Run back to the unit, you got your hot water tanks, just that keyway there, you're gonna line it up and then you can pop it on open. Control for turning it on with electricity, you just get the little switch down in the bottom corner there, turn it on, that turns it on. If you're turning it on with propane, you just gotta switch inside of the unit. Once we get there and do turn it on with propane, I will go over reset procedure and the button that I'll refer to is just right here. Before we turn it on with either source though, we just wanna hit this relief valve right there, make sure that shot of water comes out. That bit of water coming out is just letting you know that the tank is full, it's safe to fire it up, and you're not going to burn anything out by doing so. Lastly, we just got your spare tire out here, as well as a ladder so you can get up top and check your seals. And then you'll notice right in the center there, you do have a pre-wired mount for a rear observation camera. So we'll make our way inside of the unit now. So your assist handle is just going to go up 90 degrees and it falls into place. Open up your door. And then grab your step and pull it right out. Flip that last step over, make our way inside. So first things first, right on your right, we've got your fire extinguisher, so that's standard, pull the pin point and shoot. And then up on the panel here, you do have all your light switches. The one on the right there does all of your interior lights. Center right, we've got your porch light, does a little orange one outside there. Center left is your awning LED, so that does that strip light. And the awning itself is on the left there, so you're just gonna press and hold and extend, and that awning will make its way out. Once that awning's fully extended, you're going to see a little black flap come down as well as the black little metal tube. Once you see that, you're going to want to stop. If you're to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case your fabric will be underneath your tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating the growth of mold and mildew. That flap's a little sticky, there it goes. There's the tube, so we stop right there. Now for it to start raining, it's of course going to hold some water anyway, so what you can do is grab either arm, front or rear, and you're just going to pull down on it. And you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. Now if you like that angle better, you can do the same thing with the arm up front. 
before you bring it back in though, you just want to make sure these guys are back out straight and fully extended, just so that we're not running the risk of bending anything. And we're going to press and hold the track, and that onda will make its way back in. Another thing to keep in mind if you're owning is it does catch a lot of wind, so whenever it gets up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, you do want to bring it back in. Again, just like not running the risk of bending your arms. see the unit is pre-wired for solar so if you were to go that route your solar charge controller is going right there up into the bedroom here get some storage a little closet space on the side there power outlet and USB outlet down below it and a bit more storage towards the front identical storage on the other side the same outlets just with the addition of this switch here does your lights inside of the closets there same sort of storage bin on the side for the couch if we just kind of pick up the base fall down into place and then we've got the travel latch in the top right here pull that in towards the center and pull that down the mattress comes with it and you see you get your bed there you do have storage in the two back corners there that front window does also open up so if we just undo all of our latches here you can push it on out and then on either side you have this little knob there to tighten that down and that just holds the window open for you That is also the emergency exit, so you can just hop on out through there. You can pick up this bottom blind. That is, of course, your blind there, right? And then if we attach it to the top, bring the top down, there's your bug screen. Right. Once you're done, you can just unclip it, bring it back up, loosen off the knob, bring it back in and just make sure all your latches are good and tight. So now we'll just pick up the base, push it up into place, lock it back down, pick up the base of the couch, give the back a little bit of encouragement, flips right over, and there you go. So up on the wall over here, you do have your monitor panel, so in the bottom right corner there you got your water pump, turn that switch on, turns on your water pump, drag out of your crush tank to pressurize your lines. Beside that is your water heater switch, so we turn that on, you get that little red light there letting you know the ignition sequence will start. Once that sequence is started, that light will go out. It'll try that three times. If after the third try it hasn't fired up, it's at that point we'll be going and using that reset button that we'd shown you. So stood right here, you can hear the click of the igniter and the whir of the flame. We know that tank is good. Monitor systems up top. So on the right here, you got your batteries. So you can see we currently see for charging. G would be good. F is fair. L is low. For your fresh tank, as you fill that up, you'll go to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black and your gray. GFI protected outlet here, so test on the bottom, reset up top, so if you ever have power outlets that don't work, this is the first thing you should check. Some storage down below your sink here. The sink itself does have just the soft plastic cover, so nothing hot on it. Hot cold water, of course, both single base and sink. Up above that, we do have a little light there, just on its own center push button. And then up from that, you've got a little bit more storage. So that binder there has all of your owner's manuals in it, any remotes, any keys, anything like that for the unit you're going to find right in there. And kind of right up top on the ceiling beside it, we've got your thermo or sorry, your fire alarm there. Then your thermostat's kind of right beside it here. So you hit that bottom bar, it'll wake it up, it'll start from off, and then it'll go into fan low. So fan low is just going to be moving air, there's no cooling involved in that. Fan high, again, just moving air, no cooling. After fan high, it'll come down to cool high. At this point, it'll run the high fan. It'll have the uh, compressor cut in and out as needed to give you cooling. Same idea on cool low, so the compressor in and out is needed. Cool low fan all the time. Cool low auto is where it becomes an on-demand system, so both the compressor and the fan will cut in and out as needed. Same idea for high there, so of course using the high and low fan is the difference. With your air conditioner going, you basically got two different options. You got a louver on either end. You can have them closed or opened up, just choosing where you're shooting your air. After cool high auto, if we hit that bar again, it'll come down into heat. We'll turn off the air conditioner and turn on our furnace. The furnace itself is just right back over here. 
So one nice thing about this furnace is that once it does light up, you can physically see the flame down in that little bottom corner there, right to the sight glass. The downside to this furnace is that it is just a single outlet. Now being in a small trailer like this, it's not the absolute worst thing. You can just kind of grab a fan and help move that air throughout, but do keep in mind that it's just dumping its air right here. So you can see that little blue glow there, we know that furnace is going. And after heat, you just hit that bar again on the thermostat, it'll come down into off, and then it just kind of cycles back around. Alright, so over top, we got a little storage there. Then we got your range head here, so we got light in the left, fan on the right. So that's that fan that you want turned on with that flap outside opened up, evacuating our fumes. Cover just flips on up. You're gonna grab a lighter, turn on the stove, or turn it up to high. Hit it with a lighter and she fires right up. Once we're done, just turn it off. Down from there, we've got your microwave here. It's pretty standard, just like home, just with the addition of convection, so you can actually kind of cook in here. Down from that, you've got your LP detector, so propane's heavier than air. It sits on the floor, that guy detects and starts going off just like your smoke detector would. Black box here is your converter, so if we press the top and center there, you can pop it on open, you get all of your breakers on the side here. Whenever a breaker breaks, it's gonna sit in the middle, so just turn it off and then back on to reset it. Then on the right side there, you get all of your fuses. Beside that, we've got your central back, so you're just gonna basically pull that tab over, you can open it up, you get access to your bag, to make sure that's locked back in place. Once you're done, you can slide that open, your hose will attach into there, and off you go. Also, you do have kind of this kind of dustpan feature, Open it up. And then that of course will just suck up any sort of dust that you've swept over here. Up above that we've got your fridge. It's a simple control right in the front here. Over to the left there is going to run it on auto. Auto is first going to look for AC power. If AC power is taken away it will automatically flip over to gas. If you're out boondocking and you solely run it running on gas you're going to have that slider come over to the right and it will fire up on gas. And if you ever get that little check light in the bottom there, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up. So at that point, just off and back on to reset it. And if it still doesn't fire up, just make sure you've got propane. Fridge down below. And freezer up top. Bit of closet and pantry space here. And then behind me, we've got your entertainment area. So you got your TV, as well as your stereo up top here. So the power button there turns it on. Zone one is gonna be your inside set of speakers. Zone two is your outside set. AM, FM to cycle through all your bands. Your Bluetooth connect to your phone. Auxiliary is just kind of right, uh, it was in the front, in the last one. All right. So hit the knob there and you can get into all of your settings. If you press the power button there, that's mute. If you press and hold, that'll turn it off. Underneath, you've got your outlets. So there is a 12 volt TV in here, so. So you can see that's just plugged in right there. Do keep in mind with 12, with that being 12 volt, it is draining on your battery. So if you're going to be storing the unit, you're either going to want to use your disconnect up front or just unplug that. Behind that, you've got your antenna outlet. Then there's also that little button right there, which turns on your antenna. Above your dinette, you do get a couple of lights. So again, just on your own center push buttons. You get the storage over top as well. For the dinette table here, if you just kind of wiggle it up, you can get it out of the legs. The legs will just then lay down. These little black blocks there will then hold the table. You'll take your back cushions and fill in the middle to create a bed. And then in the bathroom, so the lights are just tied in with those interior lights. And then up here, we've also got your roof vent. So you're just going to turn that knob to open it up. And in the back corner, you get your buttons there to turn on your fan. So speed one, two, three, and four. Hit it again after four and that'll just cycle back to one. And turning it off, you're just pressing it off. And then you just you know, slide that back down. Once you have it closed, you're just gonna close it up tight and press that knob up and that'll just lock it into place. In the shower there, pretty straightforward, standard head and hose, just the addition of the shower miser here. So instead of wasting your water, sending it down the drain, waiting for hot water here, you can basically take this little knob there and with it pointed kind of upwards or towards the wall, that's it going to be using the shower as normal. If you have that pointed down, it'll then just recirculate the water back into that fresh tank just to help save you some water. And in your sink, hot and cold water, of course, a little bit more storage down below. Just being mindful of our drains and our water lines. And for your toilet, straightforward, flushes right in the front there. And the blinds throughout the unit are just these kind of sit where you leave them, just on a tension system. And then there's a little bit of storage space there. 
If you're looking to winterize the unit yourself once it comes time, four screws right there gives you access to your hot water tank so you can bypass that. And really that's about it for this little unit. If you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272.